issue. So this is Ben King. He rides for Radio Shack Nissan Trek. And he's joining us today from the Pro Cycling Challenge in Colorado. And it's a big race for Radio Shack as they're looking to probably get some results up there. What is the overall game plan for you guys? Um, you know, we're going to have to take it day by day. Right now we have um, you know, we have five guys who have a chance potentially for the, the overall classification. And um, Yen and I and Doug, you know, if we are given opportunities to to go out there and maybe get lucky for ourselves, then, um, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to take advantage of it. But um, I definitely we're here to, to get results and to, to prove the quality of the team. What is your role going to be like? I mean, are you looking to get a result? Or are you looking to, I mean, tell me what it's going to be like for you specifically. Uh, the best case for me would be, um, you know, one of my teammates leading the race, and then, I, then my job is really simple, you know. I get plenty of, plenty of face time and on the TV and just ride myself into the ground every day in, in support of them and, and uh, keeping them as fresh as possible for the finish. Awesome. i got a couple questions. I'm going to take you back a little bit. In 2010, you won the Elite United States National Road Race Championship, and then after that, um, you know, you started riding for Team Radio Shack, and then you moved with several other riders to Leopard Trek team um, to, fr to form the Radio Shack Nissan team. When you got that call up from that level to this world level, do you remember what that was like? Um, yeah, actually, it was, to be honest, it was a big relief. I actually signed, um, with Team Radio Shack before, uh, the U.S. Pro Championship, so that was just a, a incredible bonus. <laughs> um, I had, uh, I had been in talks with another team, um, early in the season, and I had, you know, verbal, verbally committed to them and, and plans to go onto that team, and then the team collapsed, um, just before the Tour de Lavenir. So I was, you know, it was a big decision, you know, do I stay under 23 for another year because at the time I was, I was 21 and I had a chance to, to do another year of uh, on a development team on track list strong. Um, and I wasn't sure that I was physically ready, but I didn't know if I'd have another opportunity to, to step up. So um, I convinced myself that it was the right thing. Um, I, I convinced myself and I also had a lot of, um, a lot of input from older mentors and, and people who have my best interest in mind, um, like my dad, my coach, um, you know, I have a, a really strong support system around me and they all sort of came to the conclusion, even, even Axel and, um, the guys on, on track with strong U23, um, encouraged me to, to make a step up. So I was excited, um, got myself worked up about that. And then the, the team collapsed and I was, you know, I was already, Heart set on on moving up to the next level, and so I sort of panicked a little bit right before eleven year and started uh, sending out my resume to as many teams as I could. And um, yeah, then uh, Johan Bernil came to watch the Tour de eleven year and a couple of stages and offered me a contract there. Um, so that was a a really nice reward, and it was cool to come uh, from the Trek List Strong U twenty three team, which was affiliated with Radio Shack at the time. Yeah, that's an incredible um, you know, it's program. Nice, it's nice just to continue those relationships. Um, I think the that's really important to me in the sport is just the loyalty, and I think that they reward that at the same time. So it's nice to kind of been, have been with the same program, the same people, same relationships for the past couple of years of my career. Um, I did two years on Checklist Strong, and um, now this is my second year with, with Radio Shack and Track, so... Well, that's outstanding. Would you say that the Tour of Beijing in 2011, when you ended up on the podium with the Young Rider jersey, was that one of the biggest wins of your career? Um, it was certainly exciting. It was certainly rewarding. Um, at the end of a, a long season of hard work, um, and you know, a lot of a lot of domesticing or hunting for other people, it was it was really really awesome. It was such a great honor to have um, guys like Amar Zubeldia and Johnny Brockovich and Markel and Thiago and, and these guys, Mitch and Mario, just riding in support of me. That was just 
kind of blew my mind. You know, after the after the uh, pro luck time trial, I found myself in the the best position for the team, um, and every day just sort of got better and better. That's great. Um, and had them supporting me. So, not that it was the most exciting win of my career, but it was uh, it was an incredible honor and really uh, made me feel like a part of the team. Um, well, the reason I, the, the reason Ben, the reason I is asking you that is because I, I read where you said that it was you know winning that jersey was kind of an affirmation, or at least that you belonged, and it kind of allowed you to relax and enjoy the off system. I mean, have you ever had any doubts about the kind of star you can be in this sport? Um, yeah, I certainly have doubts all the time, um, and every now and then I get glimpses of my potential, what that may be. Um, this year has been a little bit tougher, but. Um, I have at times just, you know, just seen little glimpses of what I'll, you know, could potentially be capable of in the future when, um, when I get my legs under me, really, um, try to figure out exactly what works for me and know how to time it properly. And, um, you know, a lot of it is just the, you know, things falling into place at the right time, um, with the weather, the health, um, you know, it's not, it's not an exact science, um, to get a result, you know, you can be the strongest rider for sure and, and miss out on a big result. And that, um, Have you had any career so, setbacks at all? Um, nothing major, really. This year I was sick a lot. I crashed five times, which has always set you back a couple of days. Um, I got hit by a car. Just, just crazy things that you just can't predict right. um, and can't plan for. But in general, it's been... Uh, a pretty consistent season. Um, I've been. I feel like I've been pretty consistently mediocre, and I'm still waiting for that that one uh, sort of standout result. Who are the guys you like to learn from on the team? I mean, you have a lot of experience there. Can you name a few guys that you are really influential to you? Definitely. I mean, I've I've looked up to a guy like Jens Voigt since I was, you know, since I started watching cycling, since I started paying attention to it when I was. Uh, you know, 10 years old, watching the tour of France with my dad. Um, so it's, it's amazing to be teammates with him now, and he's still as, you know, he's he has more energy than, than some of the, the young guys on the team, so it's cool to, to be around him, and um, even guys like Andreas Cloden are really open and willing to share from their own experience, um, and they're encouraging and, and also uh, a good source of accountability just to make sure that we're staying on track doing what we need to do to continue to improve, so I've been rooming with uh, George Bennett this week, these past three weeks with Utah and Colorado. He's a, a young New Zealander. Um, yeah, and both of us, yeah, we both really appreciate uh, the older riders kind of pouring into us as the next generation, the guys who are going to step into their position, hopefully before long. Yeah, absolutely. So on the team, we have a good mix of, of young and old. Absolutely. It's one of the best teams in the world. What um, mentality-wise about being a pro cyclist, what would you say the hardest thing is? And what could you tell a, a younger guy that, you know, is just trying to get up from, let's say, the elite level and just trying to get to, you know, the next natural step? What can you say the the hardest thing mentally is? Um, yeah, I mean, you asked me if I have doubts ever. Um, I think I think that best piece of advice I can give you is something that my coach Jim Miller would tell me is just to continue to trust in the process because you're going to have bad days you're going to have you know you're going to go through periods where just things aren't falling into place but if you just trust in the process and just believe in what you're doing and you know you don't take you don't have a bad day and then go immediately to Ben and Jerry's and smash a quart of ice cream and <laughs> you know sort of give up for a while if you just continue to, to trust in the process and believe in what you're doing eventually things will come around and you're gonna you're gonna improve eventually so um that's definitely a lesson that i've learned over and over because the sport is just so full of ups and downs so you have to you have to just remember you know learn learn from the lessons and not forget stuff like that that's a that's a that's a great uh, input from you it's great information let's get back to the pro cycling challenge just really quick which stage, I know you guys have probably looked at them all, which stage really sets up for Team Radio Shack? Um, we have a, a number of hilltop finishes this year. Um, there's going to be a lot of opportunities 
to to steal time and not to the finish. Um, even teams who get desperate will have opportunities sort of earlier in the stage to really shake things up. Um, for example, the start even tomorrow in stage one, it's going to be, it has the potential to be ballistic. Um, you know, we start immediately on a, a short climb, but it's steep and it's hard and it's winding roads, so the peloton's going to be single file until the break goes. And, you know, if, if the right combination of guys comes together that are willing to work together all day, you could see a you could see a big group going away early on in the race um, because you know just after the other one then you have five miles flat another four k climb down five k's and then up uh, up a ten k climb so it's uh, I'm going back and forth between miles and k's right now I apologize I get confused myself and <laughs> we, have a, we have three Americans and a bunch of Europeans so kilometers and miles it's all, sure. it's all kind of blend together but anyways point is it's going to be a hard start um and so every day has its potential to, to mix the race up well that's great i think the best i mean i think it's the only strategy you can have at a race like this where every day is long and hard and challenging it's just to take it one day at a time um it's hard to make a plan overall for the for the entire race before before day one you know yeah what takes let me just ask you one other question about you know i like to ask guys about suffering and what is it in Ben King that allows you to turn your body inside out and ride your bike like you do? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's important to me um, to have something to make it matter. Um, sometimes you can feel a bit, a bit foolish for what, uh, all the energy and everything you put into, you know, a game. But um, if you find it, for me, if I find a way to make it matter, um, it becomes real and it becomes very important. Uh, for example, relationships on the team. Um, you know, if my teammate has a chance to win, then I want to do everything I can to put him in the best position possible. Um, if a team has been working for me all day and sacrificing themselves, then I want nothing more to, than to reward their hard work. So, um, yeah, a lot of it has to do with the relationships. That's um, that's incredible. Well, I want to thank you. Um, this is Ben King joining us on CyclingIllustrated.com. He's very kind to give us his time before he starts on this uh, journey on the Pro Cycling Challenge.